Where is Padme? Is she safe? Is she alright? In this video, I am going to explore everything we can now do with habitats in Stellaris 3.9. We're going to look at all of the changes, we're going to look at what all of the new buildings do and what all of the new mega structures do around our habitats, and then I'm going to explore a few use cases that I think habitats are best used for. So let's dive in and find out what's going on. To start right at the very beginning, the first thing you will need in order to build a habitat is the Orbital Habitats technology. That will unlock the Habitat Central Complex along with the major and minor orbitals. And this is where the first of the big changes have come into place. We've not had Habitat Central Complexes, major orbitals or minor orbitals before in the game. But how does all of this work, I hear you asking? Let's grab a construction ship, we can dive in and have a look. Using a construction ship, you can right click on any planet and build a Habitat Central Complex. You can also build one around the local star as well. So that is definitely a big change. Before now, you could only build habitats around the planets. As you can see here, there are lots of options for where we can build our habitat. I'm going to build it around this molten world right here. The Habitat Central Complex comes equipped with a planet size of six, meaning you have six available districts to build. At the beginning, those are only city or habitation districts and industrial districts. You also get an orbital built around the same body that the habitat is built around. Once you colonize your habitat, it is now a working colony. It is basically going to function like any other planet you have in the game. The main difference here is that we can make it bigger. One of the main changes is that we can only build one of these habitat central complexes per system. So habitat spam is absolutely a thing of the past. We can only have one colonizable world in every system we control. And actually, I recommend you put a habitat central complex in every system you control because they're pretty good. In order to make it bigger, increase the planet size and unlock some of the other districts we might want to have, we need to take our construction ship and start building orbitals. Orbitals come in two flavors. The first flavor is the major orbitals. Major orbitals must be built around a planet or a star. Now, depending on what the deposits of that planet or star are, it's going to give us certain bonuses. The first thing is that every major orbital will grant an additional half a district on our habitat in the system. On top of that, if we build around a research deposit, we will get three additional research districts. If we build around an energy deposit, we'll get three additional generator districts. And if we build around a mineral deposit, we will get an additional three mining districts. I've now built four major orbitals around a generic planet and then one of each type. Jumping over to our central complex, we can go to features and hover over the orbital resources to see, yes, I do in fact have five major orbitals. The fifth of which is one I get automatically built alongside my habitat central complex, which is nice. They are granting me a combined plus two and a half districts, which puts my total maximum districts here up to eight, and of course increases planetary capacity, which does help with pop growth, and three each of the other type of district. And if you're enjoying this video, please report that like button to the habitat central complex for processing. The second type of orbital we can build is a minor orbital. Now, minor orbitals must only be built around moons or asteroids that you have in the system. So even if there aren't any planets, you can still expand the living space of that central habitat. Building those minor orbitals hasn't increased the maximum number of districts we can have on our habitat. However, it has increased the available number of districts we can have for our special resources, as well as increasing the building slots we have on the habitat. Filling up the system, which does take a bit of micromanagement, has now unlocked everything possible for me, almost, on this orbital habitat. You can see I now have a whopping 12 districts available, which does sound rather small, but we can increase this further with technology. I'll get onto that in a moment. It's also important to note that each of these districts doesn't just provide two housing, it actually provides three housing. And if you're a hive mind, you get plus one job here, giving you three tech jobs, three minor jobs, or three researcher jobs from each of these special districts. On top of that, the industrial district is a little different as well. 
For every four industrial districts you build on a habitat, you'll also get to unlock one building slot. Masterful Crafters has no effect on habitats, but everyone kind of gets the benefit from Masterful Crafters because of this additional building slot. Habitation districts are strictly a bit worse than city districts because it takes two habitation districts to unlock a building slot rather than just the one you normally get with a city. Because of the way we unlock the special districts, it's really important to look at the system you're building your habitat in before you start building it. Only by having lots of mining deposits or lots of energy deposits can you realistically specialize a habitat to be very much a mineral or energy habitat. Because we can build research labs in the building slot, the research districts are great, but even if you don't have them, you can still specialize a habitat into a research habitat very, very effectively. I mentioned that we can use technology to increase our habitat even further. Now, with habitat expansion, the first level upgrade, we get plus 10% maximum districts across all of our habitats, flat, which is excellent, and we get the decision to upgrade the habitat to the expanded habitat complex. At level three, we get another 10% maximum habitat districts and another decision to upgrade our habitat yet further. Upgrading your habitat increases the habitability. So habitats now start out at only 40% habitability for your pops, which is a lot lower than the 70% we used to have. Upgrading to a level two habitat is going to increase the habitability by 10% up to 50 and grant additional district slots from major orbitals by 0.25, additional building slots from housing orbitals, those are minor orbitals built above no resource deposit, and grant another corporate building slot. With these technologies, we've now pushed our available districts on this habitat up to 18, we can go yet further by going to the Advanced Habitat Complex, which you must have a Habitat Central Control on to unlock, meaning you need to hit at least 25 pops, we can improve that yet again. Basically, it's the same bonuses all over again, meaning we're going to be getting lots and lots of district slots from major orbitals and lots and lots of building slots from housing orbitals. We're now at a maximum size here of 22. So basically, this habitat represents a planet of size 22. Yes, we've had to invest lots and lots of alloys to get there, but a size 22 world is absolutely fantastic. Let's now take a look at habitat specialization. Here, I have pushed this habitat into being exclusively a mining habitat. I still have a lot of districts left over, so I could also push this into being a research habitat as well. It wouldn't be as efficient to do this, but you might as well use the space if you have it available. I've managed to find four mining deposits in this system, allowing me to have a total of 12 possible mining bays. And when combining that with the mineral purification hub, for 32 pops, I am generating a whopping 434 minerals, which is honestly pretty good. Yes, I cannot build an orbital ring around this habitat, which would allow me to push this even higher, but it is still very good considering otherwise I would only be making around 15 minerals from this system without any pops. Habitats are hands down a more efficient use of the space. I imagine you're wondering what about my beloved trade habitats? Well, the trade habitat building is still available. However, trade districts along with entertainment districts are no longer a thing. No! We can, like any regular world, fill this with commercial zones, galactic stock exchanges and the like, and then cram it full of pops to work the clerk and trader jobs and that will allow us to get a reasonably high amount of trade value. 1400 is, is good. Stop! Stop! He's already dead. However, it's taken me 105 pops to get here. So in terms of efficiency, I really wouldn't recommend using your habitats for trade unless you really, really want to. Just to note, I have of course taken the mercantile tradition here, so this does include that. Raw resources are fine, but something habitats absolutely excel at now is becoming a research station. You get a base increase to researcher output from the designation of the planet, and you can actually get more researchers on a habitat than you can on a normal world because of the zero G research district. Here I have 78 pops, and a massive number of them are dedicated to science, and we're hitting almost 2,000 research here from a single world. That is really very, very tasty. 
Now, whilst research habitats are probably the best use for a habitat, we cannot ignore a foundry habitat. This is basically like any regular foundry planet, except we can make it very, very big. Here, I haven't got any of the upgraded habitat technologies. This is just a basic habitat with all of the extra districts I could put on it. And we are already making 200 alloys, which is rather nice. Again, yes, we cannot use orbital rings and boost that further with additional alloy output from the orbital ring building, but it is still a good use of the space. And when I upgrade the habitat fully to be the level three habitat, we're now fitting 22 industrial districts on. We're making 500 alloys from 53 pots. Yes, you can do this more efficiently on an Acumenopolis, but an Acumenopolis is more expensive and will take longer to build. This habitat can be put up probably earlier than an Acumenopolis, and we are generating a significant amount of alloys. You could have three or four of these habitats across your empire and then be making 1500 alloys from the three of them. That cannot be sniffed at. It's definitely a good use case. And I believe that is all of the changes and all of the information you now need to get the most out of habitats in your playthrough. If you think I've missed anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video and you'd like to find out about the best tradition in Stellaris, and honestly, it isn't even close to second place, click the video on screen now.